Hi, so let us now solve a few problems related to the geometric and uh, force aspects of uh, gear design. The first problem that we shall be looking at is 13-1. Uh, so what is given over here is uh, you are dealing with a spur pinion with uh, 17 uh, tooth. It has a diametrical pitch of 80 per inch. It runs at uh, 1120 RPM and drives a gear at speed of 544 RPM. Please remember that the smaller of the two mating gears is called a pinion and the larger of the mating gears is called a gear. So the larger one rotates at a smaller speed. So what we are being asked is to find out the number of uh, teeth on the gear and the theoretical uh, center to center distance. So, alright, so NP, the number of teeth of pinion is 17, diametrical pitch, which is defined as the number of teeth divided by the pitch circle diameter is equal to 8. So, the pitch circle diameter for the pinion, DP, would be equal to 17 divided by 8 or 2.125 inch. Okay, so these two lines on the top, this denotes a inch. Now, we are given that the rotational speed for the pinion is 1120, that for the gear is 544 rpm. So the gear ratio in this particular problem is 1120 by 544 or it's 2.06. Now the number of uh, teeth for the gear would be equal to the, uh, it would be equal to, okay, the gear ratio multiplied by the number of teeth for the pinion and that would turn out to be 35. Now based on this the pitch circle diameter for the gear can be obtained as number of teeth divided by diametric pitch which would be equal to 4.375. Please note that the module and the diametric pitch uh, as well as the pressure angle need to be identical across the two mating gears. Okay so fine so we get uh, the pitch circle diameter for the gear to be 4.375 and center to center distance will be pitch circle diameter of the pinion plus pitch circle diameter of the gear divided by 2. So in this problem it comes out to be 3.25 inch. Next let us look at uh, problem number 13-4. Uh, Thirteen dash four. So you have a twenty-one tooth uh, spur pinion that mates with a twenty-eight tooth gear. So the pinion has twenty-one teeth, gear has twenty-eight teeth. The diametric pitch, once again, the diametric pitch is going to be the same for both the pinion and the gear is three teeth per inch, and the pressure angle again it's going to be the same for the two mating gears. The pressure angle is twenty degrees. And uh, we are being asked to compute the addendum, dedendum, um, the clearance, circular pitch, tooth thickness, base circle diameters, as well as the base pitch and the contact ratio. All right. So, fine. NP, number of teeth per pinion is 21. For the gear is 28. Diametric pitch is uh, 3 teeth per inch pressure angle is 20 degrees. So based on this, we can get pitch circle diameter for the pinion. We can estimate that to be 7 inch. Now please note that addendum is now is uh, equal to the module or 1 by diametric pitch. So in this case addendum would be equal to 1 by 3 inch and dedendum which is equal to 1.25 by the diametric pitch will be equal to 0 0.4167 inch. Okay, again, addendum and dedendum are going to be the same for both of the mating gears. Circular pitch is equal to pi times module or pi times diametric pitch. In this case, it comes out to be around 1.047 inch. Tooth thickness is half of the circular pitch. It comes out to be 0.523 inch. Clearance will be equal to dedendum minus addendum. Okay, uh, dedendum for the 
second gear minus the addendum for the um, one of the gears and it comes out to be 0 0.0833 inch base circle diameters will be equal to please note that the base circle uh, diameter will be equal to pitch circle diameter times cos phi okay uh, you can get that from the definition of the base circle and the pitch circle diameters so base circle diameter for the pinion comes out to be 3.289 inch for the gear it turns out to be 4.385 inch now uh, to get the contact ratio this is a little bit uh, involved so what you have to do is uh, basically find out so if these two the pink and the red circles happen to be the base circles for the two mating gears then this line AB happens to be the common tangent now contacting points must lie on this common tangent AB now to get the um, contact ratio we have to see where the addendum circle for the pinion intersects this common tangent where the addendum circle for the gear intersects the common tangent and we have to get this uh, distance between the points CD and divide that with the base pitch in order to get the contact ratio. So this I have actually done it uh, in uh, Mathematica. Okay, so I had to write a small piece of code. Okay, so. So I had to write a small piece of code similar to what you are seeing over here in order to finally solve the uh, locations for uh, these points uh, C and D then get this uh, length of contact divided by the base pitch in order to get the contact ratio. So I get the contact ratio to be around 1.6. Next, let us look at problem 13-10. Uh, so, in this particular problem, you have a spur gear set with pressure angle of 20 degrees. The What is being asked is uh, we need to find out the smallest uh, pinion tooth count that will run by itself, meaning uh, for a gear ratio of 1 smallest pinion tooth count for gear ratio of 2.5 and uh, smallest pinion that will run with a rack okay all right so we just need to use this particular relation for the first case we take uh, gear ratio to be 1 and uh, we get uh, minimum number of gear teeth as this we rounding it off to the next integer we find the minimum number of pinion teeth to be 13 then for a gear ratio of 2.5 again we plug uh, we use the relation and we get NP to be this rounding it off to the next highest integer we get uh, NP to be equal to 15 for uh, minimum pinion teeth of uh, sorry for pinion teeth equal to 15 the maximum number of gear teeth we can have for the gear comes out to be 45 and finally Mm, for the case of rack and pinion that is as mg gear ratio tends to infinity we can find the minimum number of pinion teeth that we need to have is 18 okay all right so let's now look at the last problem that i'm going to uh, consider sorry this is actually 13-50 i wrote 1-5 No, no, sorry, it's 13 one only. Sorry. So it's last but one problem. So what you have is uh, a parallel shaft uh, involving helical gears. So the pinion has 18 teeth and the gear has 32 teeth. The pinion has a helix angle of 25 degree, pressure angle, normal pressure angle of 20 degree, and normal module of 3 mm. We are being asked to find out normal transverse and axial circular pitches, the transverse module and transverse pressure angle pitch uh, diameter of the two gears. 
okay so fine so well we just need to run through the different relations so normal pitch is equal to uh, pi times the normal module so that comes out to be 3 pi transverse pitch is equal to the normal pitch divided by cos psi it comes out to be this and uh, axial circular pitch is uh, transverse uh, pitch divided by tan psi which comes out to be this uh, similarly we can estimate the transverse module and uh, the transverse pressure angle through these relations and finally the pinion pitch diameters sorry pinion and the gear pitch diameter pitch circle diameters through these relations they can be estimated as 59.6 mm and 105.924 mm the last problem that uh, I'm going to look at is 13-50 sorry okay so what you have over here uh, so we have a gearbox it's a two-stage gearbox involving helical gears so the gears are labeled as uh, 2, 3, 4 and 5 okay and uh, there are three shafts and each of them are supported on bearings. Some information is given so pinion 2 is the driver it receives a torque of uh, 1200 uh, pound inch and uh, okay pinion 2 has a normal diametrical pitch of 8 uh, teeth per inch it has 14 teeth normal pressure angle of 20 degrees fine so a whole bunch of information is given and what we are being final what we are being asked to determine is finally the reactions which are going to appear at uh, c and uh, d for the uh, middle shaft this is what we are being asked to estimate i'm just going to leave this page for a couple of seconds you can read it in order to get all necessary information okay all right Fine, so in this problem we first uh, figure out the geometric parameters associated with uh, the different gears. So for pinion uh, 2, okay, gear which is labeled as 2, you are given the normal diametrical pitch, normal pressure angle, number of teeth and uh, helix angle. For uh, gear 3, you are given the number of uh, teeth, okay, for pinion 4, and 5 again all the gear geometric information is provided so based on this we can find out the pitch circle diameter of the pinion for gear 2 and then again the pitch circle diameter of the gear for gear 3 and uh, we can first estimate the transmitted uh, force WT for uh, gears 2 3 and that is simply equal to torque divided by the pitch circle radius for the pinion uh, 2 so based on that you get the transmitted force from the transmitted force we can compute the total force acting on the gear teeth the radial force and the axial force through these relations now once you know the contacting force you can get the torque acting on gear 3 which is simply equal to the transmitted force multiplied by the pitch circle radius for the third gear and uh, fine once you know the torque for the gear 3 it would be equal to the torque which would be acting on the pinion gear 4 because uh, well the shaft having this gears 3 and 4 is mounted on bearing so the net torque must be equal to 0 so for pinion 4 this is the information uh, given normal diametric pitch is 5 teeth per inch number of uh, teeth for the pinion is 15 pressure normal pressure angle is 20 degrees helix angle is 15 degrees okay so based on that we can get the pitch circle diameter for this uh, pinion to be 3.106 inch and the transmitted force at the contact between gears 4 comma 5 you can get that to be the torque divided by the pitch circle radius for the pinion which comes out to be this based on this you can get the other contact forces as total force radial force axial force as this 
Now, if you put all these forces in a free body diagram, then uh, this is what we get. So this is the middle shaft. Okay, it's mounted on uh, two bearings. On uh, one side, you have a radial bearing, on, and on another side, you have a bearing which can support both radial and axial loads. Okay, so this is the gear number four. Uh, this is gear number three. Okay, I just marked all the forces acting on the gears. As you can see, when you are dealing with a helical gear, you have axial load, radial load, as well as transmitted load. Now, using uh, basically initially, I am going to do moment balance about uh, point C. So, sigma my at C equal to give, uh, 0 gives me this Rx at D to be this. Then, uh, summation of all forces in Z equal to 0 gives me this. Okay. So by the way, z is this direction, x is into the into the plane of paper, y is this. Fine. So you can then use the moment balance, force balance, <coughs> okay, in order to get the reaction forces at C as well as D. And then finally, based on this, you can estimate the net radial load acting at C and D. This is how you solve these problems. Thank you. I know this is quite involved and uh, probably when I am speaking it would be difficult to follow. So I am going to share the slides as well as the notes and uh, these two together with uh, whatever is given in the book I think you should be comfortable enough in understanding as to how do you, um, how do you define the geometric parameters for the gears and how do you estimate the contact forces at the gears and then the reaction forces at the bearings. Alright. Thank you. Have a good day.